Okay, we will start the current Council of Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Couch. <coughs> Here. Helton. Here. Blades. Here. Crump. Here. Tafoya. Here. Flores. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Lasenovich. Here. Para. I am here. Reyna. Here. Scrivener. He's on here. I saw him. Yeah. I, I'm here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Trujillo. Vasquez. Here. Did I miss anyone? Percy with the JPCB. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, Kersey, okay. I yes. thought Monica was here for that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Are there any, is there anybody present for public statements? Seeing none, anybody online? Is there anyone online that would like to address the board? No. No. Special action, action item, Assembly Bill 361, authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions, Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. This is our regular item so that we can continue to um, have uh, virtual and in-person meetings um, until the legislation is repealed. Can I have a motion? Salute. Second. S roll call vote. Couch. Yes. Helton. Yes. Blades. Yep. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Kersey. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Lisenovich. No. No. Para. Yes. Prow. Oh, Prout's not here. Reyna. Yes. Scrivener. <laughs> Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the list listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Is there any public that wants to remove a consent agenda item? Seeing none, any online? None, any council members? Roll call vote. Vasquez. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. 
Scrivener. Aye. Raina. Yes. Para. Para. Yes. Lisenovich. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Kersey. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. And Couch. Yes. Caltrans report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Thank uh, you. Mike Navarro with Caltrans. Uh, so a couple of updates before I get into projects. So you probably recall we've been talking about the 99 Summit we had with the eight Valley uh, counties that participated. Um, it was a successful event. However, since that time, the, the next step was to go into what we're doing is a, a 99 multimodal corridor plan, which will start at the southern limits of Kern County and go all the way up to US 50. Um, we were recently awarded some funds by headquarters via federal highways for about $1.65 million to fund that study. So we're looking forward to kicking that off and having a lot of collaboration with our partners. Um, also, our planning grants were announced last month and we'll be funding a, a, a long range transit plan study for the Metro Bakersfield area for the amount of $300,000. And I also want to share too, we, this month we had our, um, our fallen workers memorial for Caltrans. We've, since 1921, we've lost 189 Caltrans workers um, in the field, so we acknowledge them this month. Um, we did have a, a, a remembrance at the South Region Maintenance Office here in Bakersfield this past Tuesday, and we have one in our district office on Wednesday, and there'll be one at the state capitol on April 28th, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. And that kind of goes into what April is, a Distracted Drivers Month, so you'll see some uh, safety campaigns coming out for with new slogans for, because most of the workers that work here in the field work, a lot of it's due to distracted driving. So there'll be a campaign out with slogans. One's quit phoning around and get off your apps. Or what you'll see posted around. <laughs> Cute. Who oh, writes these? They're great. <laughs> Can't take credit for those. But just to put it in perspective, I mean, so cell phone driving, they're saying when you're going 55 miles per hour, looking at your phone, the average person looks away for about five seconds. And you travel the distance of a, of a football field to put it kind of in perspective. So just wanted to share that, the importance of, of addressing that this month. As for projects, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, at 5899, um, that contract is scheduled for completion to spring of this year. Uh, so the bridge widening over westbound, 58 over 99 is completed. The new loop connector from 58 to 99, and the tunnel are now open. The new traffic pattern is active, and the detour has been removed. Uh, 99 rehab, the Palm Avenue overcrossing to Bearsley Canal Bridge. Uh, so we've completed uh, the hot mix asphalt and, and continuous reinforced concrete pavement as part of stage three. And we opened up the northbound ramp at Olive Avenue earlier this month. Uh, we switched to stage three, which is in phase two, which is working on the number three lane. So switched the northbound traffic and southbound traffic to the inside shoulder uh, to work on the outside uh, number three lanes. At 178 Buck Owens Boulevard, uh, they did some night work that I think concluded last night and perhaps tonight as well. Um, final striping will be done in May. We'll be striping some bike lanes on westbound 178 uh, late May, June, and that project is completed to be wrapped up in June of this year. Uh, the old US 99 to White Lane 99 rehab project uh, should be wrapping up tree removals uh, end of this week. Uh, stage four activities between Panama Lane and White Lane. That work includes lowering the freeway inside lanes and then uh, adding cement pavement on the inside lanes number one and two and inside shoulder have been completed. Uh, the northbound off ramp at 223 will be closed for about 25 days and reopened in middle of May. Expected completion of that project is spring of 2023. So the State Route 223 Derby Signal Project, uh, all work is complete except for a few minor punch list items. The single poles have been installed and energized and we're coordinating with the railroad to sync the signals with the railroad signals. Uh, the 184 Sunset Roundabout, that contract was approved uh, some utility re relocation is in progress before the uh, actual construction can commence. Uh, we're expecting construction for that to start in August of this year. The Arvin 223 and 184 roundabout, that contract was approved and expects start of construction by early May. The Union Avenue high intensity activated crosswalk, a long anticipated project at the intersection of 204 and 8th Street. Bids were opened a couple days ago and that project was awarded. Uh, we're thinking three to four months of construction, so we're hoping the construction will start uh, by June. Uh, last month, I know someone asked about the Santa Fe roundabout. 
project in Shafter. Uh, so we are in the environmental phase and the draft environmental document, it should be circulated by the end of this month. Um, that is a, a longer out project where construction won't begin until spring of 2025. And the State Route 46 uh, Expressway 4B, that's the project where the, where the girder failed. Um, so we're talking about fabrication of the replacement girder scheduled to start next month. And we're currently working with a contractor and a revised earthwork plan to enable the uh, construction to continue and the road work on the ultimate eastbound lanes east of Lost Hills Road to uh, avoid further delay. And we're looking at December of 2023 for um, completion of that project. With that, that completes my report. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Michael. Any questions? Thank you. I have a question, Michael. Uh, did you have an opportunity to look into that um, pedestrian crossing? 43, the enhanced crossing. In yeah, I just get that to our traffic investigations. I don't have a response for you yet, but they're, oh, they're going to reevaluate that location for you. All right. Thank you. Thank Let you. me know as soon as you find that. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Michael. It uh, looks like they've done some pothole work along fi eastbound 58 west of Comanche, mm -hmm. but prior to tower line mm -hmm. so east of tower line to comanche it's it's people are straddling right. trucks are straddling the right hand side of the number two lane they'll, they'll put themselves on the shoulder to straddle the the, the horrible pavement there right. and most everyone's just staying in the left <coughs> lane so prior to tower and then there's a before comanche it moves into the newer concrete right or the newer pavement or uh, newer in recent years it's Right. but it's still it's still a mess yeah and i think that's what we talked about last month where um our maintenance crews did go out there and did acknowledge the, the what you explained out there yeah and we do have a more holistic project we're working on in the meanwhile maintenance will go out there and try to do some potholing and salvage you know <laughs> yeah. what's out there available now but we do have a, a a pavement project scheduled to address a lot of that okay i could see some work done though because you, you sometimes you're just stuck in the right hand lane and the they were smoothed over potholes so some yeah. of our getting done is appreciated right. thank, thank you, you. Mr. Chairman, I have something for Michael, if that's okay. Sure. M Michael, in that um, million-dollar-plus uh, Carter plan for 99, can you uh, please make sure that a, a new interchange is considered that was um, studied under the car cargo study one and two, three miles north of Seven Standard, three miles south of Lairdo? That was uh, the agreed location with all parties, Caltrans, the County of Kern, City <coughs> of Shafter, and Kern Cog. Uh, also, the, the area between Route 65 and Route 99 along 7th Standard Road, the business owners in that area have repeatedly requested a park and ride in the area. Uh, and many people use private businesses for um, a park and ride and are taking up parking spaces all day and it is upsetting the, the property owners. Also McFarland has uh, repeatedly requested um, improvements to their existing interchanges and a couple of new uh, potential interchanges if their uh, annexation goes through. So please, please make sure all those are, are considered. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you, Aaron. And, and as you know, we, we are working on a, a, a feasibility study for McFarland for the, the southern limits. And as it, we're, we're looking at that interchange. In, sorry. Excuse me. Take a break. Yeah. We have been in discussion with McFarland, and we are looking at feasibility at the south end to look at, you know, opportunities for interchange that would coincide with their annexation and economic growth in that area but point note on the other interchanges and it will be very important to us as we do the the corridor plan that we have all of our partners engaged and we definitely want representation from members of kern county to focus on some of these target areas that we're not familiar with so oh, one more one more point that i just remembered so it, if and when the tohon uh casino is built mm -hmm. there will certainly need to be improvements on 99 in that vicinity and you and i have talked about Correct. that please consider that too understood thank you yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about Union Avenue. You know, you said the crosswalk has been bid, and that's exciting. And also the work that Caltrans is going to do on Union Avenue. They gave the presentation to the city, and I wasn't here last month. So just thank you. That's, that's a transformative project for Union Avenue, obviously. But I think for Bakersfield, too, to to take a three-lane arterial and, tr and do a road diet on it is no, very I, I, different. I totally agree. Thank you for mentioning that. And, and I think... Um, Really, the support we receive from the city to help us really stream like that. Some of those can be time-consuming, and, and you know, for some of the jurisdictions we work with, the road diets are 
to be controversial, but the fact that you all came on board and were willing to take action, support that project, um, and move that you know lightning speed compared to some of the other projects, I think I think is is great. Great, exciting stuff. So District Nine. Thank you. Good evening. I have just a few things. Um, we have a couple updated maps that are now available. The um, district's online project map has been updated for the spring quarter, and so that can be accessed on the District 9 website. We also have a current East, Eastern Kern 2022 construction map that was included in this month's TPPC agenda. Um, as you all know, we're working hard on the State Route 58 truck climbing lane. Uh, we are currently this uh, working on a um, rural grant application for that, which is due in May, and working on trying to figure out how to make those schedules coincide with uh, the truck climbing lane with the Keen Rehab. And so, Aaron, you'll be happy to hear that we're trying to advance the truck climbing lane so that we can combine them for construction. No promises, but we're working on it. Um, and then we wanted to thank Kern County for including uh, the District 9 counties in the May Bike Month Scavify online scavenger hunt. And so our district PIOs are working with Kern County PIOs to get the word out to everybody on that. And we in District 9 are planning to participate in the Tehachapi Bike Rodeo also. Um, as far as project updates, we have the, um, we're trying to finish up on the Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project, which we had the ribbon, ribbon cutting on a little while ago. Um, but we still are doing some additional work to wrap up. So. Over the next few weeks, both of the northbound lanes will remain open, but we'll have to close one of the southbound lanes and, and um, make a barrier, a concrete barrier, key wall to um, block it off. And then the north round, northbound ramps for Dawn Road are going to remain closed, and all other ramps are going, will be open. So we're, we're trying to work with the contractor to get all the contractors work up to state standards, and then we'll wrap up that project. Um, we have a State Route 202 telecom project um, that where crews will be working um, between Cummings Valley Road and Bertram Circle, and so drivers may experience delays of up to 10 minutes in that area. And then State Route 178 utility work on 178, um, Monday through Friday from 6 to 6, between Easy Street at the end of Canebrake Creek Bridge and between the junction of State Route 14 and Airport. And so drivers may experience up to 20 minutes delays there. And then projects which should have no delays or minimum delays include a uh, Broom Road crack seal on State Route 58 between the uh, Broom Road and the junction of State Route 202 Tucker Road and Jack's Ranch Road traffic signal on State Route 178 between 0 0.5 miles west of Jack's Ranch Road and 0.5 miles east. And that's it for my update unless anyone has any questions. Thank you, any questions? I have a quick, just a quick comment for all of Cal Caltrans. I just wanted to thank you all for getting that uh, rest stop on 46 open finally. Um, it's a very needed stop for when I try to get my mom over there to, she likes to go to the coast every once in a while and she needs that, that stop to rest her legs and get out and walk. So thanks for getting that open again. Mr. Smith. Hey, Kirsten, uh, could you expand a little bit on that rural grant that you're talking about for the truck climbing lanes? Um, so it's it's a you know it's a, grant, a recent grant that came out. It's a very quick turnaround. Um, it's a 80 percent grant with a 20 percent match, which we still need to identify funds for mm -hmm. um, for, and it's kind of a wide variety of, of rural projects um, of which the truck climbing lane seems like it it would apply. But it's just in that one portion between Keene and Tehachapi? Yeah, it's just location two. Sorry. Okay. So uh, there are three, there are actually three truck climbing lane uh, locations that have been identified. The one we're currently working on is two. Okay. We are funded um, through the current uh, COVID funding to do um, the preliminary design work, but to move forward in the next uh, phases, we're going to have to identify additional funding. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the. Uh, I think it's item 55 is that that's the it says golden hills keen attached be keen that's the the rehab of the concrete yeah that's the rehab and a curve correction project and so it, it covers the same location as the truck timing timing lanes do they're in they cro uh, overlap each other yes and so that's why we're trying to condense the schedules so that we can 
um, go through the process of designing them separately, but combine them for construction. That would make absolute sense. It would, absolutely, really <laughs> if we can just manage to make those schedules work. Yes, so the, 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 uh, that uh, concrete pavement, that's original pavement from the construction time in the 70s? Is it? <laughs> I'm asking, I believe it is. I, I, I don't know the answer to on that, the, it could on be. The, <laughs> on the westbound, well I worked for Peter Key in their batch plant as a kid at 18 mm -hmm. years old. Uh, when they were for aggregate for that freeway and it looks like it's still the same <laughs> 50 some years ago <laughs> uh, uh, asphalt or not asphalt but uh, concrete Portland concrete you gave them good stuff so yeah it's good concrete <laughs> yeah so that's the area we're talking about that would be just and would that be done like they did at Mojave between Mojave and Roseman where they took it down then it looks like they put down asphalt in another layer and then the concrete over it is that correct yeah, I'm not sure how they would do that. Um, we're still in the design phase, so we're figuring that out. Something but really good. So okay. <laughs> Something that'll last another 50 years. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you for very much. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for District 9? I have a comment. Sure. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Smith, uh, Kirsten was, was being modest. That the news that Caltrans is, is applying is, is, is great news. Caltrans only is going to nominate three projects for that rural category statewide and and uh, one of them is in our county and and y you personally have been advocating for that project for decades literally so this is very good news we've offered to assist uh, Caltrans in their, their grant application uh, and if they're not successful this first round uh, we will continue until we find the money to, b to build that project so it's it's very good news that they're they are applying themselves and not asking us or Kern County or, or City of Tatchby to apply for that grant. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and, and one more thing, Mayor. Uh, Mayor. The, the pavement that will be replaced will be replaced with reinforced concrete pavement that will likely last probably twice as long as the unreinforced uh, pavement that is out there now. Right. So it will last more than all of our lifetimes in this room. That would be good to know. Pass it on to the next iteration. Thank you, Thank you. Any Thank other you. comments for District 9? Hearing none, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. I have a few items on this agenda. Uh, on April 7th, the uh, CTC ho held a joint meeting with um, Housing and Community Development and the Air Resources Board. We had staff that um, attended virtually. Next C CTC meeting is going to be one of the first uh, in-person meetings that they've had in over two years. It will be May 18th and 19th in Fresno. It's unusual that they hold a meeting in Fresno. And it, uh, there will be a reception on the night of May 18th for their new chairman, who some of you may know. She's from um, Fr Fresno. I will be attending the uh, reception and part of the meeting on May 18th. If any of you are interested in coming up with me I'd be glad to give you a ride the reception will I believe be around f between 5 and 6 p.m. at Fresno State on May 18th um, good news with uh, respect to the next ATP cycle that I will keep reminding you about there is 650 million dollars over 650 million dollars available for this cycle of ATP we already know that our um, our share in current cog will be 6.4 million. Both those numbers are the largest we've ever seen in the ATP program. Applications are due June 15th, and, and as, as you all know, you need to apply for the state grant first, and then we, we go down the ranked list and uh, select what was not selected by the state. Um, that's how we, we fund our $6.4 million. Uh, on March 30th, we had a meeting with um, the four cities in the county that are affected by high-speed rail and um, the county of Kern here in the boardroom. We agreed on a, um, a joint letter uh, to be sent to high-speed rail. That letter went out late last week. Thank you all um, for signing on to that letter, and I will let you know if and when I get a response from high-speed rail. Uh, Kern Cog is continuing, specifically Ms. Napier, <coughs> to work with CHP to try to get an agreement for um, 
enhance safety measures during weather-related events. Um, we still have had um, uh, very little um, movement from CHP. I'll leave it at that. Um, over the last month, we've continued to meet on um, State Route 99 and 58, the missing connectors. In fact, um, earlier this week, I met on site with City of Bakersfield staff, Caltrans um, staff on site. We continue to discuss improvements to Union Avenue, 7 Standard and um, 43 Roundabout, safety improvements on Route 33, um, specifically adding shoulders, um, 46 uh, construction that, that Michael men mentioned, and the, the next phase of 46 widening, and also um, a smaller project right at the current San Luis Obispo County line on 46. And um, as Kirsten and Mayor Smith were talking about, we continue to discuss progress on truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. Not only the ones that, um, that Caltrans are, the one location that Caltrans is working on, but um, part of our um, collective letter to CHP, to, um, I'm sorry, to High Speed Rail uh, mentioned uh, location three that uh, high speed rail has committed to doing and w what we asked for in the letter is that they move forward early on that third location subject to any of your questions mr chairman that concludes my report any questions for the director seeing none we will adjourn that meeting and begin the kern cog meeting same roll call and are there any public comments Seeing none, consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. Are there any public comments? Seeing none, do any council members wish to remove a consent agenda item? Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Final Kern Cog fiscal year 22-23 financial plan, Ms. Palomo. Good evening, Chairman Smith, members of the board. This is the budget document for the year that will begin July 1st. We are estimating revenues to be at around 8.1 million with the bulk of that c increase coming in the federal fund sources, in particular federal highways planning money. We are also gonna see some increase uh, state money coming from the California Energy Commission. And the increases in the federal and state monies will allow us to reduce the use of our local monies, which have the US strings attached. Um, on the expenditure side, we're looking about a 7% increase. And in personnel, we're gonna be adding a couple new staff this year. As you know, over the past couple of years, we've lost a few, so we'll be adding those back. In the professional services and the, in the, with the CEC money that I mentioned just a second ago, we'll be able to add some uh, charging stations in some of our member locations. We'll also see some smaller increases in uh, services and supplies and capital. And in short, this budget will provide for everything that will be uh, mentioned in the OWP that you'll be hearing about shortly. That finishes my report. If anybody has any questions, I will do my best to answer them. And if not, we will, I would like to ask for you to hold a public hearing. Thank you, Greg. Any comments from council? Seeing none, I will open the public hearing and ask for public comments. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Motion. Second. Roll call vote.
Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crop. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Final KMAA fiscal year 22-23 financial plan, Mr. Palamo again. Hello again. Um, this budget for the Motor State Authority is very similar to the last few years uh, worth of budgets that we've had before you. As you know, the revenues are derived from uh, the vehicle registration fees in the county. And with those fees and the interest that we collect, we will be maintaining the travel information system the county and the city contracts for the uh, litter pickup and as mr hakimi mentioned we have provisions for uh, chp enforcement if we can get them to uh, talk to us and work out an agreement so that's my short and sweet presentation i'll ask if anyone has any questions and then ask to hold another public hearing please any questions for greg seeing none i will open the public hearing or comments seeing none i will close the public hearing and ask for a motion. motion second roll call vote vasquez yes phil smith yes bob smith yes scrivener aye reyna yes lucinovich yes crier yes tafoya Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Couch. Yes. Thank you. Fiscal year 22-23 overall work program. Montavo. Good evening. I was trying to <laughs> get my camera on for you. Okay, there we go. There you are. This is our, hello. <laughs> this is our fiscal year. 22-23 overall work program of projects that we submit annually. We went ahead and submitted our draft to the board in February. Um, and then we got comments that we sent to Caltrans and had reviewed and approved. And we met all the criteria for the comments and um, were able, able to update, to resubmit. And what we're doing now is just asking the board to approve and adopt the final program, um, program of projects for this fiscal year. And um, we're just looking to adopt and authorize the chair to sign uh, resolution 2201 for our new fiscal year projects for our OWP. Thank you. Any comments? Can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Roll call vote. Yes, Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Vasquez. Vasquez. Uh, Vasquez, we can't hear you. If I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? Yes, please. Um, I would like to thank my staff for all their hard work on this OWP. Um, because of deadlines with Caltrans, we moved it up a full month. Uh, we usually don't adopt until May. But um, our May meeting fell after the deadline for Caltrans for our OWP. So we are a month ahead and it's because of the hard work of my staff and i'd just like to thank them thank you and hoorah you. staff <laughs> executive director's report good evening again mr chairman just a few items on this agenda i uh, want to let you know that current cog submitted a raise grant that's um, the new name for what used to be called tiger um, to the federal government we requested 16 million dollars 
um, for connections between Route 58 and Route 99, specific specifically for one connection from eastbound 58 to northbound 99. We expect to hear um, sometime in August whether we were successful with that grant application. April 29th is a CalCog board meeting. And um, one more item, the San Joaquin Valley Policy Conference will be held May 11th to 13th in Clovis. A couple of you have already expressed interest. If anyone else is interested, um, please let us know. In your folder this evening is a timeline covering April, May, and June. Uh, and a letter from Kern Cog to all interested persons outlining the availability of the draft 2023 F-TIP, the 2022 RTP, conformity, and EIR, what we've been working on for about the last uh, year and a half. A copy of the advertisement for the notice of review and comment period for RENA, and thank you to all the cities and the counties uh, and the county who were involved in that RENA process. As, as most of you know, that process can be very controversial in, in um, some counties in California. It has not been controversial in, in our county, and I appreciate all the jurisdictions working with us on that. Schedule of cash disbursements uh, for February. Progress report for uh, projects of regional significance. And a sort of an executive summary slash flyer covering our RTP. Uh, if you get any questions, and as you know, staff has been visiting each of um, the individual incorporated cities and will visit the county uh, next week as part of our uh, mandatory outreach to each of the jurisdictions going over what is contained within that RTP. Um, subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? <coughs> yes, Mayor Thanks Smith. to Rob for coming up. I was still out of state at our meeting, and Monday night you came up and you went over the RTP with our group, so appreciate it. Yes, do I thank you, Rob, for coming to Wasco. Any other comments? Could I speak to somebody from Caltrans and you, Aaron, after we're done here? Just for a minute. May is bike month, so we can all ride our bikes to the meeting next month. And meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>